I work at a place called MIT Media Lab, where I'm surrounded by amazing researchers doing truly groundbreaking work. Just in our group, we have recorded the light as it's passing in front of the camera. For this, we have put together a camera with half a trillion frames per second. And that's why you can see the pulses of light passing through the Coke bottle. We have image hidden objects around the corner and reconstructed them in 3D. For this, we are using the same technology to measure the time that it takes for the light to scatter around the corner and come back to the camera. And that's why we can reconstruct this mannequin around the corner. The future cars can use this technology to sense around the corner and avoid collision. So how do we come up with these ideas? Well, sometimes we get inspired by sci-fi. For example, we're inspired by Star Trek Tricorder, which is engineeringly ridiculous and far-fetched. What's interesting, though, is that as we move toward this imaginary artistic concept, we realize so many realistic possibilities that open up. The same spectroscopy technique that might be used to detect diseases can be used to do other things. Today, I'm reporting such other things. I'm reporting, for the first time, a technology that is capable of reading through a closed book with electromagnetic waves at terahertz frequencies. Here's a recorded data set. So this is the letter T on the first page. You can ignore the name of the algorithms for now. Now we are reading the letter H on the second page through the first page. So all the character extraction and recognition is done with computer and without human supervision. The characters are written with pencil are on paper pages. So now we are at, we are at page four with letter L, page five with letter A. Have in mind that some of these characters are even occluded by the characters at front pages. Yet we are using the best of both math and physics to read as deep as possible. So this is like reading through a closed book with terahertz technology which can be very valuable for inspecting antique artworks and documents. I don't want to talk about the details of this technology today. What I want to talk about is the cycle that generates all of these ideas, which is the cycle between art and science. Basically, we go back and forth between a realistic engineering world and an imaginary artistic one to find, well, the state of the art. Let me take you to recycle with a few examples. Let's start with Star Wars Holo Projector. This is a concept that is taken from science to sci-fi. Dennis Gabor invented the holography at 1950s, and the concept was far-fetched to sci-fi at 1970s. I was sitting in an optics class in my master's when this idea, this concept, came back to me, and I kept asking myself, does this even make sense? Because, you know, the light propagates on a straight path in a uni uniform medium like mid-air. And there's really no way you can bounce it around like this in mid-air with conventional methods. So this idea, at its core, comes down to making a point in mid-air to glow like a pixel, or forcing it to bounce or scatter light, which is very difficult, very, very difficult. Being a naive master's student at the time, I decided to do exactly that. <laughs> I decided, <laughs> I decided to take a concept from art world to real engineering world. So I studied a bunch of books on optics, and I finally decided to use acoustic fields, or sound, to deflect light in mid-air through an effect called acousto-optic effect. I later discovered that on the other side of the planet, another naive scientist in Japan had decided to use strong electric fields to ionize the air and make it glow. Unfortunately, I have to tell you that, well, we both kind of failed. <laughs> the acoustic field that my method requires is so large that you would go deaf before even seeing a single pixel. <laughs> and for Japanese version, you better wear safety goggles for watching even these few pixels. The reason that these methods don't work is that we don't know how to do them efficiently. We don't know how to amplify them and there is just so much that we don't know. It's hard to realize a far-fetched idea of a concept artist with realistic measures. We engineers are quite good at going from art to science. We can take a concept apart and say if it works or not. For us engineers, practicality is the most credible asset, 
We cannot dare to fly as far as a concept artist. We will lose our credit in our community. Engineering world is rigorous, reproducible, and quantitatively precise. But to think creatively and for being visionary, you really need to go both ways, and that's what we are not very good at. In fact, we are not even trained to operate in the concept world. These are the skills that concept artists develop very well. So I decided to learn a little bit of concept art to exercise my imaginations and explore this imaginary world. To give you a taste, let's imagine like a concept artist here. Let's imagine that we could control the path of light in midair. Fine. Here you have your Star Wars hull projector, Mr. Iron Man. <laughs> but a concept artist wouldn't stop here. If we could control the path of light in midair, we could grab the light from a very large area and focus it to a single point to generate energy simply by popping out the necessary sound pattern. If you could control the path of light in midair, your camera wouldn't need a lens anymore. It would have an acoustic phase array instead. That would allow you to generate any type of lensing effect you desire in front of the sensor. So when the new lens comes to the market, you would simply download the signal and feed it to the array. Basically, the optics as we know it would end. Compact solar cars, compact solar planes, you name it, it would be possible. Only if we could... <laughs> Thank you, I have one fan here. <laughs> only, only, if we <laughs> only if we could control the path of light in midair. But, well, we can't. Or maybe I should say, we just don't know how to do it well. With these visualizations, though, what we do know now is all the surrounding possibilities. We have materialized our concept with these pictures. Your sketches can contain your imaginations and allow you to edit your dreams as if they actually exist. This is what helps the cycle generate ideas. It encourages making invalid assumptions to see and analyze beyond the impossible. These imaginary possibilities then form the direction of the future work. All right, let's practice a little bit more. Let's take a more tangible problem, say, uh, sleeping, for example. Everyone likes to get a better sleep, right? Let's assume that the problem with sleeping is because of the beds, so the beds are not doing what they were supposed to be doing. The ideal sci-fi solution would be a human capsule that would constantly rejuvenate your body. You can see my version of it on the left, and you've seen this in the movies like The Matrix and The Avatar. But that's way far-fetched. I mean, if you go back to reality today, a mattress is just a dumb piece of foam. <laughs> so, so what if we step it up a little? How about a mattress that is a little bit more dynamic? Well, that actually exists in a different context, so we need to get imaginary again. How about a flexible, a flexible exoskeleton that moves very slowly during the night to rejuvenate your body? So when you wake up in the morning, it is as if you have done a very slow yoga the entire night. Well, let's say you like that idea, so now it's time to go back to the research mode and, you know, learn about the similar works and relevant technologies. You have to go through the cycle again and again, but with more details and sharper focus to finally get to the right solution. All right, to simplify, when going from art to science, you have to find the connections to reality and work your way through those points to bolt the concept into reality. Here, if you have a more diverse background, you're ahead of the game. Um, <clears throat> if, you have a, if you have a broader background, you're ahead of the game. So this is where your degree is supposed to be helping you, all right? Okay? So when going from science to art, you need to imagine out loud. You need to let everything down on the paper without being, let's say, engineeringly judgmental. Here you need to be... <laughs> that's true. Here you need to be, <laughs> here you need to be artistic. You need to let everything down on the paper, and you need to know visualization techniques to crystallize your imaginations. The same cycle can be used for business or any type of problem. It's just an expansive, constructive way of thinking. So no matter what you do for your living, don't let your imaginations and ideas evaporate away. Collect them and put them down like an artist, and look at them like an engineer. And trust me, you will learn amazing things. The state of the art is literally a resonance between art and science. It's a dance between reality and imaginations. I've had a lot of fun watching this dance, 
what conceptualizing all of these ideas, new gadgets, new technologies, new ways to think and express yourself. The impossible is not as far as you think, and the possibilities are endless, only if you dare to imagine out loud. Thank you.